Hello, I am Pastor Patricia Hamer. Welcome to Abiding Faith Christian Center Sunday Morning Worship. My husband, Pastor Rodney, and I are delighted that you decide to join us on today. We are excited about bringing you the Word of God. Our mission is establishing, empowering, and maturing lives to fulfill God's divine purpose. Our vision is through the teaching and preaching of the Word, we will reach the lost, bring restoration to backsliders, give hope to the hopeless, and minister healing to the afflicted. We will bring believers to spiritual maturity, enabling them to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are located at the Great Lakes Business Center, 1428 West Court Street, Flint, Michigan, 48503. That is across from Powers High School. Join us for Sunday Bible School at 10 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m., and also Thursday Bible study at 6 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Well, are you ready to receive the Word of God on today? Let's receive our pastor, Pastor Rodney Hayward. Well, you sound convinced, praise God. Your life will never be the same because God's Word is always pregnant with new revelation. Again, we've been studying a lesson called, for those of you on Facebook, welcome to us. Uh, welcome to Sunday morning service at the Body Faith Christian Center. We're continuing our lesson on the, fun, uh, on the teachings of the fundamentals of faith, those on your video recording in the near future. And remember, we said that faith is, the, the Bible teaches that faith is a lifestyle. There's scripture that says you cannot please God without faith. That's been Hebrews 11 chapter, verse number 6. It says, um, <clears throat> it says, but without faith it's impossible to please him for who he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward to those that diligently seek him. Amen. And Hebrews 11 3 it says without faith you cannot please God. In fact turn there I feel led to go to that first scripture that's the second time that it rose up on the inside of me. And I believe the Spirit of God has lead me to just springboard from that particular verse, verse of Scripture in Hebrews 11 chapter, verse number 6. Hebrews 11 chapter, verse number 6. Sometimes people get weary when they're being taught things over and over again. So, oh, can't we go into something else? Well, yeah, as soon as you learn this, then you can go into something else. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Now, you may get away with it in, in academic schools and stuff, you know, and they'll just pass you on, even though, you, even though you, you haven't learned squat diddly. They did it to a lot of football players. I remember back in the days and stuff, they were good football players. They just went on and passed them, gave them passing grades because they wanted to keep from playing on the football team because there was other people that didn't care squat diddly about them. All they wanted to do is just win, 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 and have these trophies and stuff and have the bragging rights that they were the best uh, football uh, uh, team school with the, 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 the school with the best football team in the whole city. Amen? Amen. And so that's, that's unfortunate. That's a true thing that happened, even in colleges, where there were guys who was in college and stuff, and, and the professors would just mark them with passing grades and stuff, and they graduated, man, kid, couldn't even write the name, you know, figure of speech. You understand what I'm saying? Well, God is not that kind of way. He's not that kind of father. He, he's not going to promote you. He's not going to bring you to further uh, revelation. He's not going to bring you to greater blessings until you learn how to operate the principles of his word. Amen? And fun, uh, the fundamentals of faith is a principle lesson that the Bible teaches. The Bible talks about uh, in the book of Hebrews, I believe it is, when it says going on of uh, uh, now leaving the uh, basic doctrines of Christ and going on to maturity. It talks about that. So there's a maturity that you have to grow to through, uh, grow to in the kingdom of God. Now here in Hebrews 11 chapter, verse number six, notice it says, but without faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So how in the world can you ever imagine that if you don't understand what faith is, how faith works, you know what I mean? And, and, and where faith comes from, how are you going to expect to be able to please God when you don't know anything about faith? It's astounding how sometimes we just assume things or we, a lot of times we pick up things because we hear somebody else said it. And sometimes we're, 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 we're just, we're not diligent enough to try to find these truths out for ourselves and we depend upon other people to reveal these truths to us or what we think is the truth and is really not the truth. You know, God is in control. You just got to, you just got to, you just got to trust and you just got to lean on God's unchanging hand. How do you lean on God's unchanging hand? How do you do that? 
Huh? Well, yeah, we know. But there's many people, they say that they don't know what they're talking about. Because you can't really see the hand of God, can you? <laughs> Hold on to God's arm. Well, where's his hand at? Well, as Pastor Pat says, where you hold on to God's hand, you hold on to his word. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Now, that's in the scripture. It's scriptural. But how do I keep my mind on God? I've never, I've never been to heaven. I'm not Jesus has, but I've never been. There's been some people that have had experiences. They went to heaven. But a lot of them, when they come back, they didn't say they saw God when they was in heaven. They just had the experience to leave their body and went to heaven and they came back in their body. Now they saw some beautiful things, but they really didn't see God. Right. So how, how are you going to keep your mind on God when you've never seen God? Well, you keep your mind on God because God and his word is one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made what? Flesh. That's what it says in the book of John, the 14th chapter. First chapter, John, the first chapter, John chapter 1, verse number 14. The word was made flesh. So God and his word is one. If you're going to keep your mind on God, you keep your mind on the word. Amen? So here in, in Hebrews, it says in the sixth verse right here, it says that without faith, that without it, that if you don't have any faith, he says, it is impossible. Now, impossible means it can't be done. Isn't that true? It said it is impossible to do what? It is impossible to please him, meaning God, for he, the man or the woman, that cometh to God, he says, M-U-S-T, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you know why people don't diligently seek God? You know why people don't make a commitment to get to church on time and get to church on a daily basis, well not daily basis, but when the doors are open, to come to Sunday uh, SBS class, to come to Thursday Bible study, to come to Sunday morning services? You know why they don't do it? Because they don't believe God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. They don't believe that. And the reason why they can't believe that because they never experienced it. And the reason why they never experienced it because they never done what the word says to do so that they can get experience. Remember Romans, the fifth chapter says, it says, tribulations worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Follow this scenario. It says, tribulation, tests and trials that come in life because in this world you shall have tribulation, Jesus said it. Tribulations work with patience. The word patience means to be steadfast. Turn to Romans, the fifth chapter. I'm quoting this off, but I need you to see it yourself. We're talking about the fundamentals of faith. The reason why people never know, don't know that God is a rewarder of those that diligently, uh, diligently, uh, those that diligently seek him is because they've never had the experience of God's rewards. And they never had the experience because they never became doers of the word. Are they not doers of the word? What did I tell you to turn to? Romans what? Romans 5. Romans the 5th chapter. Are you there? Yeah. All right. I'm getting there myself. So hold on for a second. All right. Romans the 5th chapter. <clears throat> uh, looking at verse, starting at verse number, starting at verse number 2. Ooh, glory to God. Start at verse number 1. Look what it says. Therefore being justified, declared righteous by what? Faith. Hey, man, you get declared righteous by faith. Faith is very important, isn't it? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by what? By whom we also have access by what? By faith. By faith. No, but you can't get access to God unless you, unless you do it by faith. You know, some people try to get access to God with unbelief, and they come to God with crying. Oh, God, help me, God. I don't know what I'm going to do, God. Oh, Lord, Lord, if you don't do something, we're going under. Oh, Lord, help me, Lord, Lord, please, 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 Lord. And look, they are sincere. They really need God's help. But listen, you cannot get access to God with that type of praying. Now, you may feel good after you pray long enough, you know what I mean? Because he, you know, his, his love, his presence may be right there and just come upon you and you sense his presence. But he can't do anything for you because if you don't ask according to his will, then he will not be able to hear you. And if he does not hear you, you cannot have the things that you request of him. Amen. Amen? If you ask anything according to his will, he said, he hears you. Yes. 
Another scripture says, seek or uh, ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. If you don't ask for what you need, you're not going to get it. You can't say come in there and cry about God. Lord, you see what position we're in? Lord, we're going to go under. Lord, we need you, Lord. No. No, you, you, you're going down the wrong pathway. And what you need somebody to do is to stop you and say, hey, 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 listen, stop, stop. You're going in the wrong direction. Hey, do you hear me? Hey. Stop. Then that's the, that's the job of someone who has a knowledge of the truth. Amen? Amen. It's to, 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 to flag people down that's going in the wrong direction so that they can receive what they need from God. Yes. Now, if, if, if they don't do that, man, they don't love you. If they don't do that, all they're trying to do is just, they, all they're trying to do is appease you so that, you know, they can get accolades and everything else from you and then they get the accolades and then you and your life go down the tube because you've never learned the truth because Jesus says if you continue in my word then you're my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth the truth shall make you free now look what it says in Romans Romans 5 chapter says by whom also we have access by faith so you got to access to God by faith into his grace that's his help his power his divine ability wherein we stand and rejoice in hope and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, tests, and trials. How do you glory in tribulation and tests, and trials? He says, knowing, knowing, say knowing. 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 See, if you don't know this, then you're not going to be able to glory in the tribulations and the tests and trials. You're going to have to know this. And this comes from the Bible, my brother and sister. So he says, in knowing this, uh, excuse me, uh, we go into knowing that, excuse me, not this, but knowing that, knowing that, same as this, knowing that, tribulation, test and trials, listen, worketh patience. Tribulations and tests and trials worketh patience. What do you mean it works patience? You mean the tribulation and tests and trials are patiently beating you upside the head? Taking their time to just whip you up and, and to defeat you and put you under? No. It says, knowing that tribulation towels, tribulations worketh patience. <coughs> that word patience means to be steadfast despite the opposition, the difficulties, or the adversities that you're facing presently in your life. Patience means to be firmly stood, standing in place, like a red, red tr a redwood tree in California. You ever seen one of them big old huge humongous trees? Them things, been, they've been standing for, um, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe thousands of years. I'm not sure. I don't know. But they've been standing for a long time. And I'm quite sure there have been a lot of storms that came through the, uh, the forest where the redwood trees are planted at. And when they hit them trees over the years, all them trees, they, they get, their roots went down so deep that the only thing the wind was able to do from the top of them, it made them sway. And when the wind went by, it went back into place. Another wind swayed from the different direction, it swayed this direction. If it swayed this direction, it's the tree, if it blew from this, going this direction, it swayed this direction, but it went back into place. It never became unrooted. I was driving down the street not too long ago and I saw a tree in front of a house just come up out of the ground. I saw the roots. And the wind wasn't really that, heavy, that hard from the, from the day before, from my understanding. But just tore it right out the roots. That's like some Christians. They're not firmly rooted. That's why the Bible says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Root it. So tribulations worketh patience. Patience means to be steadfast despite the oppositions, the difficulty or the adversities that are going to come against you. It's a given. In this world, you're going to have tribulations. You're going to have tests and trials. The only way that you can be free of tribulations, tests and trials, the only way that you're going to be free of them <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to die. Because there ain't no tribulations up in heaven. So singing that song, oh, when we all get to heaven, 
What a wonderful day that'll be. Oh, they all get to heaven. So now everybody's looking to die. They want to go to heaven. But why? I don't understand why. Because the tests and trials of life are beating you up. And they are real. They are just as real. They're just as real as, I've been saying as real as a $2 bill. There ain't no $2 bill. But they're just as real as a $100 bill. Tribulation, tribula, amen, they're real. Everybody knows about tribulation and tests and trials. Those who are living by faith and those who are not living by faith. Those who are born again and those who are not born again. They know their tests and trials in life. But God, Jesus says, in this world you should have tribulation, tests and trials, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now he ain't like some of these folks. They overcome, they win, they're champions. And all they want to do is brag about it and let you know that they won and they've overcome so you can see them. Jesus ain't like that. He has no pride about him whatsoever. But the reason why he says, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world is because if I, what I overcome, you can overcome too. Because I'm providing you what you need to overcome. Isn't that something? Okay, let's go back here right now. So he says right here, because remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It says right here, he says, uh, knowing this, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, which means steadfast, to be steadfast despite the opposition, difficulty, adversities. And then verse 4, and patience, that means to be steadfast, firmly fixed in place, remain the same. In other words, if you prayed and believed you received when you prayed yesterday, at the end of the week, you're supposed to be in the same position. You're supposed to be saying, Lord, I believe I receive when I pray, even though the circumstances don't look like it. Right, right. Because we're talking about faith. We're not talking about fate. We're talking about faith. We're not talking about senses. We live, we're operating in a whole different realm as a Christian. You're supposed to, but a lot of Christians don't. So, verse 4 says, in patience, that steadfastness, that perseverance, right? Patience, experience. What do you mean patience, experience? Patience brings about experience. Now, what is experience? What's experience? Huh? Huh? Something that you did before that brought you what? Success and success success uh, gives to you what in your life? You can, well, yeah, but it can, you, can go, you can go back and tell somebody because of your success in your past. You can go back and say, well, I've got some, I've got some what? Experience. Experience. In other words, I'm acquainted with this type of situation. I don't went through it before. I know the end results. I've been there, done that, and got the t-shirt. Do you remember that one? You remember that one? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt? With well, a little saying they said back in, I think it was Colorado. Well, in other words, I know what, I know what I'll come. Amen? That's what happens when you get experience. You can tell somebody, but I got experience about this child. Yeah, man, I got experience about that. Let me tell you about this. And you had a flat on the car and stuff, yeah. And and, and some of us went out there and we give, we've given her our experience about flat tires and nails in the tires and, and stuff like that. Because we got experience. Can you say amen? 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 Now he says, patience experience. So now I got the experience. Listen, because I stayed steadfast during the tribulations, tests, and trials. You will never have the experience. If you didn't remain patient, patient in the midst of your tests and trials, if you gave up, you'll never get the experience. If you cast away your confidence, you'll never get the experience. You got to get the experience by being steadfast, patient. Being steadfast despite the oppositions, the difficulties, and the adversities. Amen. Now, that's, just something, that's not something that just automatically works. It's something that you have to work because you got to work the word in order for the word to work for you. Yes. Amen? Because the Bible says, be ye doers of the word and not just Hearers. only. Amen? Amen? We're still talking about the fundamentals of faith. So let's look at the rest of this right here. He says right here, he says, and patience worketh experience or brings about experience. Listen, and experience 
what? Hope. And experience what? Hope. Now that word hope means a confident expectation of the fulfillment of the promise of God. Abraham who through hope believed in hope. Abraham through hope, that is confident expectation, confident expectation that God was going to fulfill his word that he gave to Abraham that through thy lawns thou shalt bring forth the seed. And in thy seed shall all the nations, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When the Bible says Abraham who through hope believed in hope, who through hope, confident expectation. So experience brings about hope. Well, how does experience bring about hope? Because experience says, hey, God was faithful who promised back then, and he's going to be faithful now. I'm confident he's going to bring me through this test and trial now. I've got some experience about the goodness of the Lord. You mean David said, he says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Taste and see that the Lord is good. How can you taste something you never ate of, you never partook of? Right. You got to partake of it in order for you to taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? You already say amen, but say amen again is what yes. I meant. Amen. 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 amen means so be it. Praise the Lord. Yes. So tribulations worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And then look at that, the next verse of scripture. The next part of it says, hope what? Make it not ashamed. Hope does what? Make it not ashamed. Hope makes not ashamed. Have you ever been ashamed? Oh, I know. Yeah, I can depend upon my brother. I can depend upon so-and-so. I can depend upon them. Oh, they, they are so faithful. I'm telling you, they're faithful. Oh, yeah, they're going to be here. I be, they're going to be here. They sure will. They, I, they gave me their word, and I believe in them. Child, you believe in them? Yeah, I believe in them. Oh, you shouldn't be believing in them. Well, I believe in them. They gave me their word. I know they're going to be there. I know they're going to be there. Don't you talk about them. I'll knock you upside your head. And then finally the time passed by and they never show up. And you don't threaten the folks to beat them up and here and there now. They never show up. Now you feel ashamed. <laughs> Embarrassed. Humiliated. Because they didn't keep their word. They said they were going to keep their word. You put your confidence in their word. You put your hope in their word. You had a confident expectation that your friend, your brother, your sister, your whoever was, was going to keep their word. But they didn't keep their word. It's going to make you feel some kind of way. Especially if you don't defend them. Now, if I can't get an amen, you can say on oh, me if you want to. Because oh, right. <laughs> we, we, some, some of us have been there already. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> I, hey, I've been there, done that, and I got the t-shirt. Praise the Lord. Amen. But hope maketh not a shame in the Bible. The God says hope, confident expectation of the experience, that hope maketh not a shame. And because it won't make you ashamed, it's because God is faithful who promised. Yes. That's why it says Sarah, who, 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 Sarah, Sarah, who through faith, right, counted him faithful, and she ended up receiving the promise. So it says, hope make him not ashamed. Now read the rest of that. For the what? The love of God. For, oh, there it is. For what? The love of God. The love of God is shed abroad in our, whole, in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Then all this came as a result of walking by faith. Living by faith. Listen. Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hope is shed abroad in the heart. The love of God is shed abroad in the hearts because experience, hope, confident expectation, expectation calls us not to be ashamed because God was faithful who promised. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those. He's a rewarder of those. He's a rewarder of those. He's a rewarder only of those who diligently seek him through his word. They hold fast his word. They're doers of his word. So you can't, you, you can't, that, that, that carnage of that phraseology, well, you know, the Lord sometimes says yes. 
And sometimes the Lord says no. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You just never know what the Lord's going to do, my brother and sister. Yeah, you just never know. His ways are far past finding out. You just have to accept your lot. This is just your lot in life. You just have to accept it. Accept it. God has some hidden purpose in that which you're going through, my sister. So just endure the suffering and the pain. All of that is human wisdom. That's the wisdom of men that the Apostle Paul says. I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in power and demonstration of the Spirit. That their faith will not rest in the wisdom of and power and demonstration of the Spirit, confirming the word. No, you can know exactly what God's going to do because he said in his word. If God says he's a, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, who are you going to believe? God or the people? Now listen, when we say God, you remember you've never seen God. You've never been up in heaven with God. Now God is in you of uh, truth, of surety. But the way that you have that confidence in God because you have your confidence in his word. That's why you got to hear his word over and over and over again. There's many voices out in the world. There are millions of voices, trillions of voices constantly speaking through advertisement, television, people talking, radio, internet, Facebook, Twitter, all kinds of stuff, voices speaking to you constantly, news broadcasts. A lot of us twisted news in the first place. Feelings, emotions, what you see, what you smell, what you taste, constantly feeding information to you. And a lot of that information is contrary to God's word. It's contrary to God's word. That's why he says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by the word and not by the senses. We walk not by the feelings. Now, feelings are true. But remember, we take our faith through the word and we change the things that are true and bring into existence the things that we want. Remember I said this last week. We call things that be not as though they were. We don't call that those we don't we don't call things that be as though they're not. We call things into existence that we want to change. We call things into existence that we want to change the things that are. You remember that? Let me say that again. We call things into existence that we want to change the things that are. We don't deny the things that are. God never told you to deny that. That's Christian science. That's a false religion. No, we call things that we want to change the things that we are. That's why it says, whosoever shall say. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatever he saith. If you keep saying what you have, you're going to continue to have what you say. Jesus spoke to the tree, fig tree. He changed the thing. He changed the thing that was. And then what he wanted to come to pass came to pass. That tree dried up from the roots and no man was able to eat from that, that particular tree ever again. It worked. When Peter and them was in the ship, when Jesus says, launch out, go into the other side, I'll meet you there later. And he finished praying again, he walked on the water. No, he got into the ship. He said, let us go into the other side. He said, let us go into the other side. He went to the higher part of the ship and went to sleep. All of a sudden, the devil, all of a sudden, Satan caused the storm, the wind to come up. And all the water was just coming up into the ship and the disciples became afraid. They forgot what Jesus says. He says, let us go into the other yes. side. He didn't say, let me. Right. He said, let us. They woke him up and what did he do? Oh my God. Oh Lord, if you don't help us now, we're going to drown. Lord, do something. By some hook or crook, do something, Lord. Help us out, Lord. Oh, I know what we do. Hey, 
Throw out all this stuff in here. Get some buckets and start throwing the water out. Throw it, throw the water out. Come on, Peter, go back here. You do this. Stop. You do this, Thomas. Do that. Come on. We're going to get through this. Uh huh. Hey, I tell you what, let's turn back, go back to the shore. Come on, turn this thing around. Turn the shells, the sails around. We're going to get back to the shore because that's too much water. No, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't go back and operate in the natural to change what, he, what needed to be changed so they can get onto the other side because God said, God said, to Jesus, go on to the other side to preach to them people over there. So he said, launch out and let's go. Uh, he said, let us go on to the other side because God told Jesus to go on the other side. So what did he do so they can get on the other side to obey God? He spoke to the wind and he spoke to the sea. And what he wanted, the things that he wanted, came into his existence and changed the things that were. Didn't it? Yes, it did. Didn't that happen? Yes, it did. You can do the same. We can do the same thing. I say we can do the same thing. Individually, collectively too. But he said, whosoever shall believe in his heart. Whoso shall believe in his. If you don't believe, it ain't going to work for you. Believe it. You can't try it. Listen, you can't try it and expect it to work. He said nothing about if thou shalt try in thy heart and say with thy mouth that whatsoever you say with your mouth, it shall come back. No, he said if you shall believe in your heart, those things which you saith, they shall come to pass. So you got to believe. He said, look, without faith, it's impossible to believe him. But he that come to God must believe, must believe, must believe, must believe, must believe. M-U-S-T. Absolute necessity. If you don't believe it ain't going to happen, my brother and sister. And though you can't go around and change the scripture just so, you can, just so you can suit your failure to walk in the light of the truth of God's word. Because your mind says this is impossible. It can't be done this way. This makes no sense. Right. It is not sense. Sense is not faith and faith is not sense. Are you listening or are you going home? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you listening? Hey, I, I, this, this, this is what, I, what the Holy Spirit is having to minister now is unscripted. It's not, it's, I have a word, the word here, but it's, it's unscripted. This is hot off the press. I like them kind of messages. Amen. <laughs> I taught the message at the funeral. Friday, and I, I, one of the things the Lord gave me was a message called, you know, about choices and how life is full of choices. And I preached to them, and I got down to the, 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 the there, there are some choices which are more severe than other choices, and it's true. Life is full of choices. Yes. In fact, we make probably hundreds of choices daily. Yes. We make choices. Mm -hmm. You make a choice, you made a choice, what, what seat you're going to sit here when you came in here? You made a choice of what, where you gonna, where, where are you gonna put your purse down in the chair. Amen. Amen. You, you made choices. You made a choice of what route you're gonna come to, you know, come to church, and you know, sometimes it's the same route over again. But hey, it's still a choice. Amen. So there's a choice whether or not you're gonna be hearers of the word or doers of the word. Critical choice. To live by faith or not to live by faith? To, to, to put yourself in the position to be not conformed to the world's way of thinking or to be transformed by renewing your mind. I, am, I, I'm, 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 I want to use the word not because I'm trying to be judgmental but because I, I do get astounded when I'm around different Christians how they haven't chose, they haven't chose to give God's word the preeminence in their life. They're Christians. They love God. But they haven't given, God, given God's word the preeminence in their life. And they come up with all types of, well, they come up with ideas. And they're doing things mostly because this is the way it's been done in the natural all their lives. And they continue to function from the natural. For, 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 for example... He said, let not corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. That it may minister grace unto those that hear you when you talk. 
But I hear some Christians, when they talk, they talk about the government. They talk about leadership. They talk about different subjects, and the, and, the, and the things that come out of their mouth are corrupt. And it's as if when, they, when they've heard that verse of Scripture, either they heard it preached or they read it in the Bible, they don't take that, they don't take it serious that this is God speaking to me. You understand what I'm saying? You don't take it serious as God speaking to me. Let not sin reign in your physical body. Take heed what you hear. Come out from among them and be separate, say the Lord. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You got Christians, they're still fellowshipping with darkness. Then they back over here. Then they back over there. Then they back over here. And they just back and forth. They're lukewarm. You can't be lukewarm and receive the promises of God in your life. I never said God don't love you. He loves you. He'll love you. He, un he loves you unconditionally. But to receive, to receive the greater blessings of God, we're going to have to make a decision. That's true. You're going to have to make a decision. You're going to make a choice. We're talking about the fundamentals of faith, living by faith. You're going to have to, you're going to, some things you're going to have to get settled in the beginning as we're on, 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 in, on, in route to the greater blessings. There's greater blessings than just being saved Amen. and being able to feel the presence of God when he comes into the carpet gathering, the carpet anointing. There's greater blessings. And we have to have a desire that this is what I want. I want all that God has provided for me. That, do, that doesn't mean we all going to hit the mark all the time. But listen, I'd rather be, I'd rather be further along <laughs> tomorrow than I am today. Because I'm striving. Right. Today, I thank God for today. I look, at, I look at the blessings of my life today. I look at the blessings of my wife and, my, and our children and our grandchildren. You know, I look at the blessings of, 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 of what's going on now. Things are not perfect, but they're a whole lot better than they used to be. You understand what I'm saying? Our position in life, where we live now, it's a whole lot. Man, who would have thunk it? You know, we got a house, we almost got a house full of people in the house now. <laughs> but we, we chose a house, you know, because we liked the house and stuff, but we could have we could have went to a smaller size house, but we chose a house. Now we got enough room for everybody to come. Amen. That's the blessings of God. Amen? Amen. And, and, and they definitely won because I was the sharpest you know, the sharpest tool in the, in the, in the uh, toolbox, it's because of God. My, our, my obedience and her obedience. Now, before she met me, it was my obedience to God. Because, you know, when she came along, there were certain things that God had blessed me with and prospered me with. And we came together. She bought her blessings, my blessings, and now we're where we are right now. Had nothing to do because, you know, we're special with God. No, no. We're special as far as being obedient children. Amen. And we don't, we're not perfect. Not perfect at all. But we made a decision. Me and Pastor Pat, we made a decision. In our marriage, number one, we both got strong personalities. Sometimes me and her, you know, we get into, we get in, our heads bump. You know what I mean? Her head's harder than mine, but we bump heads, you know? But then we got, we, we made a decision. God's word is, has the preeminence in our marriage, in our life. And as a result, we've just been going forward, and our marriage has been getting better and better. We made a confession a long time ago, a vow, that our marriage is going like like, to be like heaven on earth. That when people come to their house, all they sense is the love of God and the peace of God in their heart. Isn't that wonderful? Our, our, our granddaughter, the one right there, she said when she got her Grandpa, you know, when I'm at home, I, I will have these bad dreams, but when, but when I'm here... I don't have no bad dreams anymore. Wow. So, whoa, praise the Lord. Amen. I know what it is. And I ain't going to deny it. <laughs> and that's not pride. That's just confidence in the one whom I put, we put our trust. Right. He's confirming our, his word in our lives. Oh, yeah. 
Without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder. He is, he is, he is a rewarder. Not just a song say, God is, God is, God. I remember that song, I used to sing that song, we used to sing that song till we sweat. Get hoarse, just God is, God is, God is, God is, God is. God is. I never figured out what God is. God is what? Well, the Bible says God was there. <laughs> yeah. I did not. I was a young Christian then. But I now know. I know he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. There's a qualifier of the rewarder rewarding you. It doesn't happen like ripe apples falling off a tree. It's something you've got to do. Now, I didn't write the book, okay? <laughs> so don't get mad at me. He, he just preached so hard. He preached like he mad. No, I ain't mad. I'm glad, praise God. I'm just mad at the devil that's a hook with you and made you think something opposite what the truth says. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> okay, Holy Spirit, I believe that I have given them which you put on my heart. So with your permission, we're going to go forward in this lesson. Oh, I'm telling you, sometimes I, I, I want to weep. You know, because Satan, that, that lousy, he, when he talks about he goes about as a roaring lion. You remember I told you some time ago, I said that the word that you're going to be receiving, that you're receiving at the Body Faith Christian Center, that devil's, the devil's going to come and he's going to come to try you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember I said one time, remember I said that one time? I said, he's going to come. To, and I said it not because I was prophesying, even though I was. I was prophesying what the word says. Because when you minister the word, you are prophesying. You're saying, thus saith the Lord. Now, Jesus says, the word that fell upon the wayside, those who heard the word, psh, it was just, okay. Okay, sounds good. And then, psh, that's it. It's on the wayside. The devil come immediately, psh, the word's gone. Then there's a word that fell upon the stony ground. It fell upon the stony ground because it had stones in the ground. If you ever try to plant stuff in the ground, you got stones in the ground. Your, your, your plants, your plant stuff that you planted, or even grass, is not going to grow. Why? Because it got stones in there. Stones are blocking the roots from going down into the dirt way down ground where the sub substance, substance to feed them plants is. So you got to get the stones out. And then those that fell upon the thorns, and then those fell upon the good ground. He said the stony ground was those who received the word with gladness, but the, but the, but when the test, when, when, when the test and trials, when tribulations come against the word, when the test and trial comes against the word, it never says Jesus never said the tribulation, test and trials is going to come against the person that heard the word. It's going to come against the word. It's always against the word. Because if he can get the word out of you, he can get your faith. And if he gets your faith, he can get your substance, he can get you, and he can bind you up. That's right. He always comes against the word. It's nothing personal. <coughs> yes. It's against the word. Yes. And I said that, and, I, and I've watched, and I've seen people who sit in the seats that you're sitting in, and they've heard the word, and I know what happened. It's not because they're bad people. Mm -hmm. They didn't love the Lord. They do love the Lord. But they didn't understand spiritual truths. And they didn't embrace this spiritual truth to know that Satan is going to come and he's going to bring tests and trials for the word's sake. And then that one thorny ground, on, the thorny ground, on the thorny ground is those that says with the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in and chokes the word out. The word's there begins to bring, uh, and it says it brings no fruit to perfection, which means it begins to bring forth branches so that the fruit can grow in the branches. But the fruit couldn't come, through, come forth. Why? Because of the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things enter in. That's why he says, watch and pray. Yes. Be sober-minded. Yes. Amen? Amen? Because Satan can bring some things, allow some things to come into your life, but the only purpose behind it is to get you distracted. Yes. Amen? Yes. Pastor Pat was talking this morning when she was teaching the class and it was something good that she said, and she was talking about how these little things that happen, you, this will come up and this will come up and that will come up, and, and, and you 
take care of that. Well, okay, I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss church. I'm gonna miss church uh, because you know this is coming up. You know, and, and then you go ahead and you miss it and stuff. You know, what things things sin? Well, no sin, but it just get you out of the environment of getting the word and. And then you come for a little, you know, a few more, a couple of weeks. You and then something else comes up, and you say, "Well, you know what? I, you know, it's, it's not that you have to do that thing; is that you just chose to do that thing. Yeah. It wasn't like it was a priority. It wasn't like it was it was detrimental. You know what I mean? Like, you know, somebody was dying at the hospital, and you need to go there, and it was your your, your relative or what have you. You understand what I'm saying? It's just something you know you had opportunity to do, and you just well, okay, I'm gonna do this. You know, so just to appease my you know, friend or whatever. And then you do it. So this thing keeps coming up. And then so there another thing comes up and another thing comes up. Reading your Bible and, and, you know, and doing the Bible study and et cetera and praying. All these little prayer. Man, prayer is something he really comes against. Oh, man. I understand what Pat means from my own experience when I don't pray. And I get out there, it's like, like I didn't put something on. Right. The back of my pants must be open. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you just, you just, and you, you and, and then you, oh, feel like it's something, oh, something not right. You feel naked when you don't, when you don't spend, when you don't spend time in prayer. Now, I'm, I'm, I, that's the best way I can describe it. For those of you on Facebook that may be listening and stuff, I, I, can't, I, don't, I can't describe it in any kind of way. Listen, it's better felt than told. <laughs> Amen. Told. I have to pray. And I, I'll do what she says do. I'll get in the car and I pray. I'm a job where I'm at now and stuff. But, you know, I can go into, you know, on the Monday and Tuesday and stuff. Now, I'm doing a weekday when I'm not working and I'm at home. I can always stop and, and pray. Now, I found myself sometimes there's things that I, I need to be done that I know should be done. And then I'll start, I'll start messing with this. And I know I'm, I'm down the pr- downstairs to pray. And then I'll start messing with this. And for it, I have to say, what you doing, Rodney? What are you doing? The most important thing in your life in the morning is to pray. Get on your knees. I get on my knees. And I start praying. Cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. Then he said, that which fell off on the good grounds, though with an honest and good heart, having heard the word, receive it. And they bring forth fruit with patience. Right, right. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, this, this is real. The, th- those things are not in there. It's, it's just not in there because it's, it's religion. We don't practice religion. We don't have a religion. We have a relationship. We're sons of God. We're aliens in this earth. Amen? It's all about look for extraterrestrial aliens. They're here already. <laughs> hey, excuse me, sir. You're looking up and looking over there. I'm an I'm a, I'm a, uh, uh, alien, extraterrestrial. I'm an extraterrestrial. Hi, my name is... Do you want to go to my world? <laughs> I like that, don't you? You want to go to my world? Yes, I do. <laughs> Remember that, Felicia. You can use that next time. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Yeah. I'm telling you, God's word is pregnant with truth yes, and is. light. Yes, the entrance of his word gives light yeah. so we can understand how to operate on this earth. Because we're pilgrims. We're pilgrims. We're passing through, and we are going to come back, but it ain't going to be the same place that we left. <laughs> it's going to be a remodeling that's going to take place, a major remodeling of this earth. In fact, the heavens and the earth. All this now existence is going to burn up with a fervent heat. <laughs> then he's going to make all things new. It ain't going to be no sun. <laughs> he said. He said, because the light shall come from the throne of God that shall come down and be among us. Woo! Praise God. It's in the book of Revelation if you're wondering where it is. Probably haven't read the book of Revelations, but it's in there. God shows us the things to come. It's that hope that we've given. That's that hope that we've been given in the Bible. So we can have a confident expectation. Because when you get to looking at this world now, it's, oh, man, this world is going to pot. Oh, Lord, do everything is going so bad. It's just getting worse and worse. Quit looking at the world. You a Christian? Yeah. Well, what are you looking at the world for? He says, set your affections on things above, 
and not on the earth below. Get your focus switched or changed. Look up, not down. Ooh, praise God. You got to do it. Yes. You have to do it. He can't make you. I can't make you. I wish I could. But I can't. If God can't, you know I can't. But he gives us the word. Mm-hmm. I set before you, God says in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. I set before you life and death. And then he has the audacity, Sister Lante, to, to tell you <laughs> what to choose. Yeah. He said, choose life that you and your family, in your family, in your children, your grandchildren, grandchildren may live. So now you understand why you see in some Christians' life, their families on down the line, family members, blessed, 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 blessed. Who they show must be lucky. They must be from a special bunch. No. Somebody made a decision to walk, to walk with God. Yes. To put his word preeminence in their lives. Amen, amen. To be doers of the word. That's all. Amen, amen. Now I know the whole, you know, most of society is going in the opposite direction. That's where you got to be, you got to be, you got to have, you got to have, you got to have some bravery. You got to be brave, boy. When all the other boats are going down this direction and you're going up this direction. Everybody going back down. You swimming. You looking. And they looking at you like you're crazy. You're laughing. <laughs> but they don't know. You ain't the crazy one. They are. <laughs> They're going the wrong direction. Huh? Wide is the way that leadeth to destruction. But narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Didn't the Bible say that? Didn't Jesus say that? Jesus said it. God said it. I believe God. So if I got to go up the stream while everybody going down the stream, the easy way, just going with the flow. You know, whatever it may be, shall be. Que sera, sera. Everybody's doing it. You know, everybody, you got to, you, God wants us to enjoy the things in this world. He ain't never said that. <laughs> he ain't never said that. Well, you mean the God wants just the sinners to enjoy things? No. He just said, don't set your affections on things below, but on things above. He said, let them that be rich put not their trust in uncertain riches. He didn't say anything about being rich. Just don't put your hope, your trust in the riches. Enjoy them. If he tells you to give them away, then do what? Give them away. Because it came from him in the first place. (laughs) The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And if you follow the principles of law, sowing and reaping, it's going to come back to you anyway. You ain't losing anything. But see, you got the mind of the world. You think that receiving is the blessing, but Jesus says it's more blessed to give than to receive. That don't make no sense. Right. Faith is not sense and sense is not faith. Wow. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Seven minutes. Okay. Oh, man. I'm telling the anointing is here this morning. You sense the spirit of God, the presence of God? Hey, listen, listen. You remember the disciples that was on the road to Damascus? Them two disciples after Jesus was crucified? And then, they, you know, Mary, Mary and Martha went and they saw that he was resurrected. And the angel told them to go back and tell the disciples. And they heard the report. There were two disciples on the road. They were going to Damascus. And they were walking, talking among themselves. And they were just, they had their head down. They was walking. And all of a sudden, just out of the, just out of the thin air, boop, there was Jesus walking alongside them. First there were two and now there are three. He said, what manner of conversation are you having? What, they said, what manner of conversation are you having as you walk among, walk among your way? They turned around and said, huh, are you a stranger? <laughs> huh, are you a stranger, Jerusalem? Have you, haven't you heard what's going on? What's the matter with you? He said, what things? What he said, you know, this thing about Jesus and the Nazareth and stuff. And, you know, he was crucified and stuff. And certain ones came and said he was raised from the dead and his body's not there anymore. And, and then we thought it was going to him going to restore Israel back to his glory and power and stuff. And he did it. And Jesus says, he, he began to start at the scriptures. Starting at the grave. Starting at his resurrection. He began right there. He began to expound on them. When they got to, the, to a fork in the road, he acted as if he was going to go on. Because, see, Jesus... 
He ain't going to make you sit and watch, listen to him. He ain't going to beg for you to listen to him. If you don't want his word, he's not going to push it down your throat. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So they compelled him. Said, oh, where are you going? No, no, come with us. Come with us. So they, they went to the, you know, to the hotel, motel. And they got them a room and stuff. And went down to the, you know, cafeteria. And they ordered all the food and stuff, you know. And then Jesus sat down there. And they started eating and stuff, you know. And all of a sudden, Jesus got to the bread. He broke the bread. He gave some bread to them. You remember the story? And when he gave the bread to them, all of a sudden, poof, like he came, that's the way he went. And all of a sudden, their eyes were open, and they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us? That's what just happened to you, because Jesus is here right now. Everything that I spoke was his words, it was him speaking to you. His presence, that's why his presence is here now. You can sense it. They sensed it. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Don't your heart burns within you as he's spoken to us along this way in this service because we've been listening to the truth? Whew. My, 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 my. You can't get this sitting at home. It's good, on, it's good on Facebook, but it's better, it's better when you're here. Amen. Some of you are being drawn here, but you just won't make your mind up to come here. Amen? Amen. Hey, one individual, they said, boy, I, I just know I should be here, Pastor. I know I should. Remember that one? She kept saying, I should be here. I should be here. But, 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 she finally got rid of them butts, and now she's here. Amen? Sitting up under the word. Been growing, too. She said, been growing. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to call no names out, but praise God. You know, some of you probably know what I'm talking about. Oh, this is so good. So listen, the things that are seen are perceived by the senses are real. But they exist in the spiritual world, which our physical senses cannot see or perceive. In the book of 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, verses 8 through 18. How much time I got? Do I have time to read that verse of scripture? All right, let's go to, go to 2 Kings. Somebody said, uh-uh. Go to 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, verse number 8. I want to show you something right here in this verse of scripture. And this will be the only scripture you'll probably be able to share tonight, this morning. Oh, my, my, my. 2 Kings chapter 8. 2 Kings. God has some examples about truth that he reveals to us. Because when he says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In other words... The things that are not seen are perceived by the physical senses are real. The things that are not perceived by the physical senses are real. But they exist in the spiritual world, which our physical senses cannot see or perceive. In 2 Kings, the 8th chapter, starting at verse number 8. Excuse me, 6th chapter. 6th chapter, not 8th chapter, 6th chapter. <coughs> starting at verse number 8. There's a situation that happened with one of the kings of Israel. The prophet Elijah was involved with it. The whole city was surrounded. It says in verse 8, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall, my, shall be my camp. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for there the Syrians are come down. The, the Elijah the prophet was receiving the word of knowledge concerning the Syrian army so that the, the, the king of Israel would not be uh, attacked by them and destroyed. So, so God told them what their strategy was, what their attack plans were, so that the king of Israel would be, could escape out of the attacks. And they did, this happened over and over again. So verse number 10 says, And the king of Israel sent to, take, to, to, sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. Over and over again he was saved. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of, of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, which one of us is a spy? Which one of you is a spy? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet that is in Israel telleth the 
king of Israel the words that you speak in thy bedchamber. Well, he wasn't that far, but he did tell him about the strategies. In verse number 13, he said, go and spy where he is. Where is Elijah camped at? Where is he living at? And that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. And therefore sent he hither, thither, horses and chariots and the great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? How shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. Then this is, this is, Elijah's, this is Elijah's response to his servant. His servants saw thousands and thousands of chariots, chariots with horses and men with spears and bow of the Syrian army. They surrounded the city of Dothan. And this is what the servants saw with his eyes. He probably could hear the chatter or the foot, foot, uh, foot stomping of the horses or the tinklings of the spears against the chariots that was there. He heard and he saw he might even smell something if they hadn't taken the bath for a long time because it was on the battlefield. This is what this servant heard. This is what he saw. This is what he smelled. This was something that existed. Notice it says, Elijah said to him in verse 16. And he answered, Elijah answered his, prophet, his, his servant, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now the servant probably looked out there after the, after the prophet said that and says, he looked around, probably looked at himself and counted one and looked at the prophet and said two. Then he looked out there and started counting all the Syrian army. 10, 30, 70, 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 20,000, 30, thousand picked troops. And then he looked again and said, one, two. <laughs> but now the prophet said, fear not. There be more that be with us than it is with them. Now this is what Elijah said. This was a true story. Listen, gotta go fast. Helicopter came. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Wait a minute. His eyes was already open. That's what made him fearful because his eyes was open. He already saw. He saw reality. You know, we got to deal with reality, Pastor. You know, you got to be real. You can't be caught up in all that Bible stuff. You can't be caught up in all that religious stuff. You got to look at life and reality. You got to be real. Oh, Really? Let's see what happened. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around the bow. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word, according to the word, according to the word, according to the word of Elijah. Whew. Whosoever shall say. And Elijah said unto him, This is not the way. And you know the rest of the story. Did you see that? They, listen, listen. Let me tell you something before I close up. Listen. When God opened up the eyes of the servant, that is not when the angels of the Lord and their chariots begin to exist. They were there already. It's just that he could not see them with his natural senses. And it's just like right now. The angels of the Lord are encamped about in this room right now. And you just can't see them. But they are here now. God is with you every place you go. Your angels are with you every place you go. The angels of the Lord are all over this world. You just can't see them. Because you must walk by faith and not by sight. Woo! Glory be to God. Woo! My sake is that Woo! Glory. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Listen, I must close. Those of you on Facebook, those on the video recording, 
Uh, this is Abiding Faith Christian Center, Pastor Rodney Hamer and Pastor Patricia Hamer with the pastors of Abiding Faith Christian Center family. Well, if you haven't been born again, all you got to do is Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you shall be saved. I can't lead you to the prayer right now because my time's on run out. Remember, John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. God bless you. We'll see you next time.